Recently, Atlas's long-awaited sequel to one of its most beloved series has finally been released, and that's Rock of Ages 2, Bigger and Bolder. <laughs> but seriously, it's clearly Persona 5 we're talking about, and not to spoil any end of the year debates, but this is likely going to be my game of the year. It has stylish UIs and menus, great art direction, intuitive combat, amazing music, and a compelling story framed through a prosecutor's investigation that goes into themes of oppression and rebellion. But we aren't here to talk about any of that. We're here to talk about something serious. Something that has brought a lot of controversy. Something Atlas doesn't want us talking about. The ongoing waifu wars. For those of you unaware of this ever-growing civil war, waifu is an otaku term that refers to a non-living female character that a person considers a potential significant other, with husbando being used to refer to a male character. While these characters aren't real, fans take their chosen waifus quite seriously, as insulting a person's waifu is a form of disrespect to their tastes. This love for their waifus leads fans to rush out to buy merch with those characters' faces on them. From keychains, to model figures, to body pillows. For large franchises, this character love is frankly quite profitable, and Atlas's Persona series has been a long profiteer of this fan appreciation. This is because a mechanic that separates the Persona series from other RPGs is that it has elements of a dating sim, where you build your relationship with other characters in the game, allowing you to understand them better. These interactions can even eventually lead to romantic relationships with the characters, further perpetuating the player's connection with them. But what's wrong with that you might be asking? Why can't someone enjoy their weeb romances? Well, it's not simply about people enjoying their characters, it's about proving their waifu is the best, all the while declaring everyone else's tastes are trash. Chie, what are you doing here? Let's get you back home. <laughs> You're home now! And there are even rogue factions that wish to say every waifu is trash in hopes of creating chaos amongst the fans. Since the series rose to popularity with Persona 3, the same game in the series that introduced the social link mechanic, there's been ongoing arguments amongst fans who has the best waifu and or husbandos. Whether they love the quirkiness of Elizabeth, the mature awkwardness of Mitsuru, or the manly caring Akihiko, all the while fighting against anyone who dares say otherwise. And once Persona 4 hit mainstream success, unleashing a new wave of potential best girls for fans in the process, the waifu wars hit a fever pitch. Even before the release of Persona 5, people were already choosing their sides, preparing for the coming battles. But why do these wars continue? Why can't we come together and agree that everyone has different tastes and we should all just accept it? It's because Atlas wants it to continue. The creators design these games to continuously create fodder for the waifu wars, which leads to more factions in the battles that occur in online forums. Though, how is it that Atlas has made a series that is known for its best girls and boys? Well, the devil's in the details. Firstly, it's how the characters are used in the game's narrative. The creators of the Persona series write these interesting and nuanced characters that complement their particular settings and stories. Your cast of misfit high schoolers and anthropomorphic animals are the only ones who can defeat the embodiment of death, stop the TV serial killer, or change the hearts of adults that are being mean. Each character contributes something to the narrative, and it wouldn't be the same game if one of them was missing. Everyone in the main cast have their own character arcs within the narrative without it needing to revolve around them. For example, Kanji has to accept his possible homosexuality before gaining his persona and joining the party. After being rescued by Seize and protecting a girl that was bullying her, Fuka becomes a more confident person. Even the entire cast of Persona 5 have to fight back against the adults that have been oppressing them, something that can be extremely difficult for someone in their youth, a struggle that is quite relatable. It's arcs like these that make the characters more endearing as a whole, making them better potential waifus and husbandos than generic party member 235-A. This is because the more relatable a character is to the audience, the more we wish to see them succeed, which increases our interest in them. If a character comes off as too bland or perfect, it's hard to really be invested in them and their pursuits. And due to the Persona games being lengthy even for a standard RPG, you end up spending a lot of time with these characters, and seeing them grow as a result. The stories of the later Persona games themselves are also just more approachable from a tonal standpoint than a lot of RPGs. 
Persona 1 and 2 had a very dark tone to them, being that they were close to the Shin Megami Tensei series they were a spin-off of, than the later entries in the series. P3, 4, and 5 still have mature themes and ideas, but does so in a more lighthearted way, something that is helped by the more vibrant color palette of those games. By taking itself less seriously, the characters are able to be more relaxed and have moments that flesh out their individual personalities. Like Morgana's frequent attempts to hit on Anne while still being a cat, or Yukiko's laughing hysterically at the joke glasses that Teddy makes. Shut up, it's an endearing character trait. All the characters in these games have personalities that are written to appeal to a variety of tastes. Chie is a quirky girl that loves kung fu movies and has a drive to protect others, for those of you who are looking for a tomboy with a sense of justice. On the other hand, there's Rise, a cutesy idol that's always cheerful and enjoys making others happy, for those that like someone that has a happy-go-lucky attitude. Then there's Akihiko, a boxer that's eager to join in on a good fight, but also cares for his friends, appealing to those who like someone with a strong will. So no matter what your personality, there's a character in the Persona games for you to fall in love with. Oh, I think I cracked my ass. On, are you alright? Is yours cracked as well? Of course not! Isn't it supposed to be though? On that note, the later Persona games also include a lot of wish fulfillment in them, more than any other series I can think of. The main characters the player acts as are designed to be blank slates so that they can be your personal avatar in the game, allowing you to be the specialist person that ever walked into the high school, and through no real virtue of your own have everyone immediately drawn to you due to your skills in almost everything. This is a very fantasized version of any high schooler's life as most people simply fit into their niche group and pretty much stay there. Or if you were me, sit alone in the corner. <coughs> but this fantasized reality justifies the harem of other characters showing interest in you, all the while looking down on any other potential love interest because it's your story, something that is rather appealing to those looking for potential waifus. What the hell, man? What kind of crazy voodoo are you doing to be such a chick magnet? How can one guy be so popular with the ladies? But a good weeaboo simulator isn't defined by its good storytelling, and that's where the social link mechanic comes in. As opposed to other RPGs like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, a large amount of the later personas is you spending quality time with other characters in the game's world. When you have free time in your school schedule, you can choose to hang out with party members or other people in the town in order to build your bond and social link with them. So in P4, between going to school and jumping to the backside of the TV, you can hang out with the inhabitants of Inaba and learn about their personal struggles. Building these social links is incentivized by having each character be associated with an arcana from the tarot, and the stronger the link with the individual, the stronger the personas from that arcana that can be fused making building a relationship with your chosen waifu or husbando a core part of the gameplay. Beyond the gameplay benefits, these social links also allow you to explore the characters in ways the game's main narrative won't allow. As you progress their individual stories, you learn more about their conflicts and what they have to go through, helping them grow as a person through your spending time with them. By showing each character's internal struggle, Atlas and the creators of the Persona games flesh them out as individuals, making each of them better prospects as waifus. And if you reach the highest social link with a romanceable character, you can choose to have a relationship with that individual. But you aren't limited to just one, resulting in characters fighting for main character coons, i.e. your affection. Though while you are incentivized to build relationships with all these different characters, with Persona 3 and 4, it would often be more beneficial to build stronger links with your party members over those of side characters, as party members gained new skills as their social link grew. This ended up limiting the acceptable waifus in those games to the girls and guys within the main cast, while other characters in the town would get ignored unless they had an arcana that had useful personas, or you're one of those people that enjoys seeing multiple characters be developed. Noticing how they were limiting themselves, Atlas fixed this in Persona 5 by changing the social link mechanic to that of the confidant system which operates in the exact same way, except raising any character's ranks has their own in-game benefits. 
from your teacher that visits you as your personal maid allowing you to slack off in class, the doctor across the street who wishes to experiment on you with the promise of drugs, or the lush reporter giving good publicity to your group. By making this change to the social link mechanic, the number of potential waifus and husbandos in the game expanded. But like the previous games, the time you can spend with each character is limited, so you have to be resourceful and choose who you wish to hang out with wisely. This time constraint is yet another way Atlas has fueled these waifu wars, as players became defensive about the character they chose to spend their time with, as they don't want to think that they were wasting their time romancing the wrong character. Though, while good writing and character development are important to their master plan, Atlas has learned the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover, is BS. Which is why no one chose... Um... What's her name? The girl from the music club. Uh... Oh, whatever, no one cares about her. When looking at the art of the games, since P3, there appears to have been a concerted effort into making the most appealing characters for a specific fanbase. I think one of the reasons why people aren't as attached to the characters of Persona 1 and 2 when compared to the later games, along with the fact that majority of people haven't played them, is that the character designs simply aren't as appealing. That isn't to say they don't look good, but when looking at the cast of Persona 1 and 2, it appears that the character designer for the games, Kazuma Kaneko, was more interested in designing sleeker, more realistic characters compared to previous SMT games. Though this resulted in all the characters looking a bit on the blander side, some of them having this doll-like quality, especially due to how the skin is often lighter and they have these dead-eyed expressions. It wasn't until Shigenori Shojima took over as lead character designer for the Persona series with P3 that the designs took on a more anime manga art style, with softer features and lighter colors than those of the previous games, something that was more colorful and visually appealing. As the characters have become more anime-like, they have also become more expressive as a result, allowing them to have all those kawaii faces that make fans gush. Speaking of designs, each of these characters' appearances are clearly meant to cater to specific tastes. Chie and Yuka have more tomboy looks with their shorter hair, as opposed to Risei and Mitsuru's longer red hair for players that are into that appearance, and Risei even has twin tails for that added appeal. Or if you're into the Sundere Hot Topic look, there's Marie from Persona 4 Golden. Even a cursory look at Persona 5 shows that they're continuing this trend in pandering designs. From Futaba having this cutesy nerd look, to Anne and Matoko wearing form-fitting latex suits in the metaverse, to your homeroom teacher in the maid outfit, to the hot doctor in the punk look, and the choker, and... Wait, what? Oh yeah, it's obvious that each of these designs are meant to cash in on players' particular tastes or fetishes. Between the character designs and the personalities, Atlas tries to create a sort of brand loyalty in their players with the characters they choose to romance, something they personally believe is the best choice. And since this is the waifu they believe is best, anyone who disagrees can go to hell. Though, since your chosen waifu or husbando says something about you as a person, being told your choice is trash may feel like a personal attack, which leads to fans being quite vocal about who they think is obviously bestest girl or guy, resulting in them buying as much Persona merch as possible and tweeting about who is clearly best guy or girl in order to advertise their superior choice in waifus, all the while doing free publicity for Atlas. So we can see it's through these different tactics that Atlas is only trying to further the waifu wars, as they profit from people buying their games and merchandise, while fans fight against those that have different tastes than theirs. Like those fanatics online that say Goro is best boy in Persona 5, pushing their ideology onto others while being blinded by his boyish charms, without realizing they're continuing this violent cycle. Fans of the Persona series need to wake up, get up, and get out there, and reach out for the truth so that they can avoid mass destruction by Atlas's desire to perpetuate these wars in the name of profit. This is why I'm making the hashtag Stop the Waifu Wars, a movement where we can come together and agree that every girl and guy is bestest, and hopefully we can one day see an end to this needless bloodshed. Unless you're a fan of Yukiko, then you have trash taste and you can just